In this tutorial, you will learn how to create this free column animated image display using HTML, CSS and jQuery. So we've got three columns here, uh, they're in minimized mode. When we hover over them, it expands uh, horizontally uh, and fades out the other two images. And same with the middle one and also the third one does the same thing, just in a different way. And also this text uh, appears in the bottom as well. This is based off the same display used on the Cisco website, which obviously is very similar. Uh, all the differences are peripheral pretty much, I mean, if I might, it's pretty much the same. Um, I've tried to replicate it to the best of my ability. And if this interests you, then stay tuned to find out how to create it. Okay, so I've just set up the HTML boilerplate code beforehand. Uh, I haven't added anything to it, so if we just go on see what it looks like. It's just a blank screen, nothing on it. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, import jQuery and the fonts that we're going to use. And this will be uh, in the head tag. So we'll just create a comment so we know what, uh, what these link tags below will be related to. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Google fonts and we're going to uh, download the Open Sans font. Well, not download, but use, import. We're going to import the light style and also the bold style. So we'll copy this. Uh, these two link tags initially, and then we'll click on the bold uh, weight, font weight. And then we'll just copy the bottom most link tag of that because we've already imported the, uh, the required Google fonts CDN. Um, and then next we'll need to import jQuery, so I get this from W3 Scores because it's a content delivery network, meaning we don't have to host it ourselves. Okay, we've typed in CDN to yeah, get started. Again, I'll post a uh, link for all the uh, resources that I used in this video so you can use it yourself. Paste another comment so you know what we're doing. jQuery. The first thing that we're going to create in the body is a div that will be a flexbox and it will horizontally and vertically center everything. And in this website that will simply be just the image carousel display. So we'll create, we'll call it, we'll give it an ID because we're not going to recreate it because it's not, it's, it's only a dummy website. So this horizontally uh, image carousel will be the only thing on the website which is the reason why we're horizontally and vertically centering it. Okay, once we've created that, we're going to um, go to our link, uh, which links to our style sheets up in the head of the document. We'll say styles.css. Create that file, styles.css. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select everything as indicated by the star. We'll remove the, the, the browser's default margin padding, like so. And then we'll set all the elements to be box size and border box. So its margin and padding are included in its width and height values. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set all of our elements to use the Open Sans font that we got from Google. So we'll go back to the Google website and we'll copy uh, the font family property. Put it in there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change uh, the body's background color to a, a faint gray color. The same one that's used on the official uh, sys Cisco website, so that's a, a hex value of F2, 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 and then we'll target uh, the align center page ID. Its position will be fixed, uh, so it will stay in the same place regardless of our scroll position, even though you won't have a chance to uh, scroll on this website. We'll just do it for consistency. Display will be flex, as stated before. Width will be 100%. Height will be 100% of the document. So this is fully the size of the document, both horizontally and vertically. And then justify content will be center. And on the other axis now, align items will also be center. Okay, now I need to go back to our markup. Inside of our line center page div, we're gonna create uh, the main carousel div. Its ID will be carousel main, so we'll say ID cow. Make sure you spell that correctly. 
and we'll do it in a kebab case, it's a hyphen. And now we're going to create three sections inside of the carousel main div. Uh, these three sections will represent uh, the three columns or three images inside the image display. We'll give each one its own unique ID so you can so it'll be a lot easier to work with in JavaScript and CSS. So we'll say carousel call one and then we'll just change the numbers for the other two sections after we copied them. Inside of the first section we're going to create an image tag and its source will link to our first image which we've got in a web webbp uh, image format because that's the one that's stored on the website. It's alt uh, attribute we'll just say uh, Cisco promotional image one and then we will copy the relevant images for the other two sections so that'll be the second image all of these images by the way are contained in my root folder from a project and I'll show you their dimensions once I've finished copying out the, the, uh, the different images so as you can see they're contained in the uh, the root of my project they are they're all the same dimensions which is 960 by 532 this is important because uh, the 532 pixels horizontally uh, the actual total uh, horizontal width of our image carousel will be 1600 which is obviously it's not exactly 532 uh, times by 3 but it's close enough and that's all you need basically you want your image carousel to be roughly the cumulative total of all your image widths multiplied together. They don't need to be, it doesn't need to be pixel perfect match because uh, you won't notice a couple of pixels uh, difference, but it does need to be roughly the same for this to work properly. The height, it doesn't matter because your uh, image carousel will automatically be uh, the height of all your images, which themselves will have a uniform height. So now we want to go back to our style sheet. We'll create a comment to say that we're styling uh, the carousel now. So we'll say general carousel and then we'll target the carousel main ID. <clears throat> its position will be relative, so we'll be using absolute positioning for the for the different columns. Its width will be 1600 for the reasons that I stated before. It's roughly it's roughly uh, the cumulative total of the three image widths. And then min width, we'll just say 1,600 again because this isn't. It's not a responsive uh, feature. It's not designed to be responsive. Height, as stated before, it'll be 532 pixels because it matches the height of all three images. Below this, we will target the first section, and we'll target that for its ID, which is carousel call one. Position will be absolute, so it'll be positioned in relation to the carousel main element, which is position relative. Overflow will be hidden. This is how we mask the image. Left will be zero, so its left edge will be aligned with the left edge of its container. Height will be 100%, so it matches the height of its container. Width, we'll use the calc method, and we'll say 100% divided by three. Three because there's three columns and we want them to be of equal proportion by default. We could use 33.3 recurring, which is obviously the same value, but it makes more sense if we write it out like this. It just, in, in my opinion, it just makes it look neater. Border right will be five pixels solid white. This will make more sense later and put a transition on the width. We'll say 0.3 seconds. And then we're going to copy these uh, values for the other two columns, just change the number around. Uh, and we'll also change, so we want the second column to be centered in the middle of the image display. So the way that we do that, we say right, zero, and then we say margin auto. This will center uh, an absolute position element in the middle of, of its container. But other than that, everything will be the same. Again, paste it one more time for the third column. And then we'll say, right instead of left, we'll say right zero. But other than that, everything will also be the same. So now if you go back to our document, we can close this now. 
Yeah, as you can see, it's looking, uh, well, I mean, the images aren't positioned correctly, but we have got three columns of equal proportion and they do contain images, which is good. So we're making progress there. And you've also got these two uh, vertical dividers on each side of the middle uh, column, which is good. It's also what you want. But if we go to the actual Cisco website, you can see that they've got this uh, overlay, which appears on the images which aren't currently selected. And you've also got a bit of a uh, gradient as well on the images, which makes uh, the text stand out from its background a bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our markup and above the image but inside of, of the section we're going to create a div and we're going to give it a class of image gradient and we're also going to, below this we're going to create another div we'll give that the class of uh, image overlay and then for the image overlay we'll give it a uh, ID of overlay1 because you want to target these individually in the JavaScript file but we don't need to target the image gradient individually, which is the reason why it doesn't have an ID. And we'll copy these two dividers into the other sections in the uniform order. The only thing that will change is the numbering and the IDs, obviously, for the reasons that I just stated earlier. And then we go to back to our style sheet to style them. We'll create a comment saying that we're starting the overlay now. So we'll say overlay, just so we know what we're doing for the future reference. We'll target uh, the image gradient class, its position will be absolute, but because the uh, the column is positioned with absolute positioning, this will be positioned in relation to its column, its width will be 100%, its height will be 100%, so it will match uh, the width and height of its container basically, or of its section element, its left will be zero and its top will be zero so it matches the origin of its container. We'll give it a background of linear gradient. The direction will be to bottom. We'll say comma. First color will just be RGBA with zero at alpha. In other words you can't really see it. The next one will also be the same at the 50% mark. And then the last one we'll give it we'll give this one some alpha. We'll say one so it's fully visible and that will be at the 75% mark. And we'll also give this a z-index, so it's a visible above the image of two. Now if we go back to our website, not that one. As you can see, there's this gradient now at the bottom. This will help make the text stand out when we get to creating that. Now in our style sheet, we will target the image overlay class. So we'll say image overlay. Its position will also be absolute. Remember that it's in the same hierarchical position as the image gradient, so it will also be positioned in relation to its column, and it will also match its height, so we'll say uh, width 100%, it will match its width and height, sorry, and height 100%, and it will also have the same origin, so we'll say left and top, both of them will be zero. Its background colour, at the moment, uh, it will be black with no alpha so in other words it won't be visible because we'll make it visible later on uh, when it's not the current column being selected and then it said in next we won so it will be displayed above the image but, uh, but under the image gradient now if you go back to our document we're going to solve the problem uh, how these images aren't positioned correctly so as you can see this middle image you can't even see the woman and same in this one in the right hand side our image. So we're gonna go back to styling, we're gonna create a new comment. So we know what we're doing. Images we'll say, and then we'll target uh, first carousel via its ID. So we'll say carousel call one, and then we'll use the child selector to t target the image uh, element. That's a direct child of the first column. And then we'll say transform, Translate x minus, so we're pulling it towards the left because plus uh, values will pull it towards the right. And we'll say 210 pixels, so we'll drag it towards the left by 210 pixels. And we'll give uh, a transition on its transform uh, of a time of 0.3 seconds. And now we'll copy this selector for the second uh, 
column. The second column, we want the image. Uh, we don't want it to be dragged towards the left. We actually want it to be centered uh, horizontally in the middle of its column. So what we'll do, we'll say position will be absolute. Its left will be 50%. And to uh, center that horizontally, we will drag it back by 50%. So instead of making the left edge of the image being aligned with the center of its container, will make the, the actual center of the image be aligned with the container. So as I said, pull it back by minus 50%. And then we'll paste the selector one more time. This one will be the third, for the third image inside the third column. And yeah, that this will actually have the same values as the first uh, image column. So now if you go back to our website, as you can see, it's looking good now. They're looking, they're positioned correctly, the images. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, give our image carousel some animations. So we can do that actually in the style sheet. We don't need JavaScript just yet. So we'll set animations so we know what we're doing. And then we'll say, we'll target the first uh, carousel section via its ID. And then we'll give it a pseudo uh, class of hover. And then we'll say change its width up to 60% So expand that out of it. Remember that we gave uh, a transition on the carousel's width. If you scroll up, so yeah, it says transition width on 0.3 seconds, which will be the animation length. And then we'll also uh, target uh, the images when we hover on uh, its related column. So we'll, again, we'll use the child selector and we'll say image. And we will animate the transform property of these images. So we'll say, we'll copy this uh, property up here, but we will change the value. So I'll say move it to zero pixels. So now it will be moved towards the right alongside uh, the column itself, which will be expanded. This will make the animation look nice. Below that, we'll copy this uh, top carousel ID selector. We'll change it to two. So we're targeting the next column now. Its width will be 60%, but we, we want to give uh, a border uh, left of five pixel solid white. This will uh, make more sense later on, but essentially we're making it so um, no borders. Essentially we're making it so the borders uh, don't appear to be disappearing at random. Again, it will make more sense later on as I go through it. And then we'll also target uh, the image inside of the second column. So we'll change it to two and it will be translated to uh, coordinate zero now. Same as the first image. Again, we'll copy this. Target the third a column when it's hovered, when it's being hovered over. Its width will just be 60, so we'll move these border properties. And then we'll target the third column's image. And that will also be translated to coordinate zero on the horizontal axis. So now if we go to our website, we can see that it's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's problems here in terms of the actual uh, positioning. And okay, I'm not sure what's going on there. I think. Okay, one of the problems is the fact that we're actually moving the second column's image. I made a mistake here, we don't actually want this. We don't want to uh, target the image when we're hovering over the second column. And we're also gonna change uh, this to three, so we're targeting, so we are moving the uh, third column's image and we're also moving the first column's image when we hover over its related column, but we're not moving the second column's image when we hover over its column. So now if we go back to our website, as you can see, this isn't actually moving, but these two are these two uh, ones are. Okay, now there's still a lot of problems with this. As you can see, the positioning's all over the place. So we're going to go. We're going to create the JavaScript file now to solve these problems. We'll say uh, scripts.js. We'll create this file in the root in our root directory. Scripts.js. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create references to uh, the three sections uh, through the carousel, through the IDs. So we say first carousel, because we're using jQuery, we use a dollar sign, and then we target the, the respective IDs. So we'll say carousel call one, whoops. And then for the others, obviously they're gonna follow a similar order We'll change this one to second, change the numbers, target the relevant uh, carousel, and then we'll change this to third, so first, second, third, 
And then we're going to create an event listener for when we mouse over the first uh, carousel or the first column of the image carousel. So we'll say dot mouse over or lowercase. Put in the uh, callback function. We'll do it as an arrow function. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, set the first carousel to be on top of the other ones. And we achieve that through changing its uh, Z index value. So we'll write a comment to indicate what we're doing. And then we'll say first carousel.css. Z index is 10. So it will definitely be above everything else. And then we'll also uh, change the other two carousels to be zero, just in case. Uh, we hovered over them previously. Now they need to be, be set back to zero. So they'll be displayed uh, below the first carousel. And then, yeah, we'll just change the values to the relevant. We isn't uh, jQuery in this. I mean, in my previous two videos, I used JavaScript instead of jQuery, but honestly, it just made the video longer than they needed to be. So we're using jQuery now, just for brevity. What we're going to do now, as I've indicated by my comment, is we are going to basically reinstantiate the borders. The reason why we're doing this is because it will make it more clear when I move on to dealing with the second carousel. But basically, uh, the first carousel borders will be removed when we hover over uh, the second carousel. So that's why when we hover over this one, we want to reinstantiate them. So we'll say first carousel.css border right because that's the only side the border was on in the first place and then same as before five pixels solid white and then we will remove the border that was replaced on uh, that was placed on the second carousel and its corresponding border will be border left so now there'll be only one version of, of, of the first border so there's only two borders this white one and this one here on the right uh, and this border could either be the left border of the middle uh, carousel or the right border of the uh, left carousel. Uh, in this instance, it will be the right border of the first carousel, which is the reason why we've written this code here below the comment. Okay, now we're going to create the hover uh, event listener for the second carousel. So we'll say second carousel, mouse over, same as before, callback function as an arrow function just for is we'll just copy this formatting and then this will be zero but this one I'll be 10 the second carousel which is the middle one and then below that we're gonna say same as before sort the borders out and what we'll do is we'll give the second carousel a border both on the right and on the left and then we'll move uh, the borders given to the first and third carousels the reason for this is basically so uh, when the second carousel expands out its borders will also be uh, appear instead of the second carousel hiding those borders because it's displayed over and also the, its width is expanded. So we'll say second carousel.css border right and then five pixels solid white. And we'll copy this one more time just for its, just for its left border. And then, and then uh, actually we'll, we'll uh, change this to be a map so we can have multiple, um, add multiple stylings in one go. We'll say border left, we'll say the same, five pixels solid white. So now I added both borders uh, at the same time. And then we'll say first carousel.css, uh, remove its right border. Uh, yep, and then we'll say, so we'll say none. And then we'll do uh, similar things for the third carousel. Only we'll, we'll remove uh, its left border. So we'll say border left none. Whoops, need, that needs to be a string. And then now we'll do, we'll create the third carousel event listener. Again, it will be not too dissimilar from what we've done previously. Again, copy this, but just change it so it's accurate. So that will be zero apart from the third carousel, which will now be above everything else. And then we'll follow the same uh, comment format, sort the borders out. So third carousel, actually we'll just copy this. 
third carousel border left, but it will have a border this time. And it will five pixels solid white. And then we'll, we'll remove uh, the border that could have been applied, applied to the second carousel. So we'll say second carousel.css border white, because that will be its opposing border, and we don't want the borders to overlap. Five pixel solid white. Oh, sorry, no, none, because we want to move it. We just got a bit carried away there. And so now if we go to our document, as you can see, the borders are working fine now. Everything's sorted out. This image in the middle is staying where, where it is, which is what, what we want. But these ones are moving out. Everything's working uh, as it should be. Okay, so this is just a quick addendum to the current video uh, regarding an error which I detected after I did, I did the main recording session. As you can see, if we when we hover over this middle image here, and then we hover to the left image, look at what happens to the right border. So I'll do it again. So it disappears for a second and then reappears. So the reason for this is because when we hover over the middle image, the borders on the first image and the third image get removed. And then when we hover over the first image, the border on the right image doesn't get uh, reinstantiated. So the solution to this is, uh, this is the finish code as well, which you'll be, which you'll be seeing uh, later on down in the video. But just regard this for the moment, just the border part, which we have created at this point in the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove, but we're basically going to reset everything, the borders as they were uh, at the start in uh, the first carousel mouse over uh, event listener. So we'll say border left none, and we'll also say border right, and we'll set that to none as well. And then simply we're going to reinstantiate uh, the left side border, so we'll say border left, on the third carousel. And doing this, it should solve the error. So you click on, well, so you hover over the middle image, and we hover over, yeah, and as you can see, it's working now properly, everything's working as it should be. I just wanted to uh, clear this up before I proceeded with the video, and now I'll continue with the video that I recorded earlier. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the overlays, which get applied uh, to the other uh, elements when we hover over uh, the selected element. So as you can see, these ones are blackened out now, the other two images. So this is what, so we're going to do that now. So in the first uh, carousel, hover a mouse over event listener. We'll create a new comment to say what we're doing. We'll say over lay animations. And what we're going to do now is we're going to target all of the image overlay elements uh, that are not uh, a child to the first carousel. So in other words, the image overlay uh, element that is a child of the of the second carousel and the third carousel. The way that we're going to do this is we'll say image overlay. We use the not pseudo selector, and we'll say we'll target uh, the first carousel. So we'll say car carousel call one, and then we'll use the child selector specified by the greater than sign and then image hyphen overlay and then we'll say CSS inside we use a map so we can change multiple properties we'll give it a transition so we can so it can be animated background color time of 2.5 seconds and we will change it to be We'll change it to be uh, point. So we'll give it point six opacity because the member is currently RGBA black, but with uh, zero opacity. So we'll say point six zero alpha psi. And what we want to do now is the problem with this is, so when we hover over this, obviously the animation gets applied, which is good. But when we hover uh, off it, it's the animation, the overlay is still there, and we don't want it to be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a new event listener, which is for the mouse out event. Of the first carousel, so we'll say mouse out. Create a callback function. Inside we'll create the comments, we know what we're doing. Reset overlay of other pictures. 
will be what the comment says. And then we'll copy uh, the selector, in fact we'll just copy the entire thing. We'll change uh, the transition though to be a quicker animation, because that's how they do it in the Cisco website. And we will change uh, the value to be back to 0 alpha, so it won't be visible anymore. So now we hover over, it appears slowly, hover off, it disappears, uh, still animated but still a lot quicker animation. And so now we're going to copy this uh, similar thing, just for the other carousels. So. In the second carousel, uh, mouse over event listener, we're going to copy it. Uh, make sure it's aligned properly. And then we'll change it so it's not uh, the image overlay that's not a child of the second carousel, because we're currently in the second carousel event listener. And then we will copy the mouse out event listener for the first uh, carousel, but we'll change it to the second carousel. And we'll also change uh, the selector as well to be the second carousel. And again, one more time for the third carousel now. Whoops, I don't know why the indentation is not working, but there you go. Change the necessary values. One more time now. Promise it's the last time. There you go. Now everything should be working fine. As you can see, it's looking good. It's looking good now. The final thing that we've got to do is we've got to uh, do the text. So as you can see, this text that pops up from the bottom. So we need to obviously do this in markup first. So we go back to our first carousel section. We're going to create a comment to specify to separate things out a bit, and we'll say text content, and then we'll also create another content to separate things out even further. We'll say end text content in between we'll create a div it's, it'll have a class of image container inside of the image container div will be another div and then we'll say it will be block container so we're containing we're having a container within a container the reason being is because image container is absolute so it will be it will respond to the animation but this block container it will be a uh, position static so it will help us uh, with positioning but this block container won't be absolute position because that will be too hard uh, to position our text elements in inside the block container we'll create a div its class will say block header and inside this will contain the header text of the first carousel so this right here copy that in there Below this div, but inside the block container, we'll just create a paragraph element, and we'll copy this text. And then below that, we'll create a div, and that will be read more. And it will have a class of uh, block hyphen button. So now that we've got this sorted out, we're going to copy everything in between opening and closing uh, comments and we'll copy it into the other two sections like so go make sure the comments make sure everything's indented properly uh, and then we will change the text obviously to match the text here I think this one's learn more I believe and let's find out more but we'll just change this first And then we'll do it for the last column as well. I don't know why it pastes like that, but it's not that much of a problem. Yeah, this one will be this button is learn more. And then the header will copy this business resiliency solutions. And then oops, and then copy that. Paste it in like that. And now this will look probably, yeah, it's not going to look, uh, yeah, it, we need to style this out immediately. Below everything that we've done already, we'll create a new comment. So we know what we're doing. So we'll call it image text ambassand btm. Target the image container class. Position will be absolute, as I said before. Width or match the width 100% completely. 
height at the moment will say uh, 35%. We'll change this later on. Bottom, what we'll say zero. So the text will be aligned with the bottom of the container. Z index will be three. So it's positioned uh, above the gradient. And we'll say transition. Give it a transition on its height property and we'll 0.2 seconds. Below that, we'll target the block container class. Its width will be 100%. Height will also be 100%. Text align will be center. Display will be flex, but you want this to be a flex column, not the default direction, which is row. So we'll say flex column. And then we'll say align items center. So that's aligned horizontally. And then we'll target the uh, the block header. Its uh, color will be white. Font size will be 26 pixels. Sorry, pixels would be start a bit. And font weight will be lighter. So this is the reason why we copied uh, the thin version of the Open Sans font. And then what we will do now, we'll, we will. Uh, Target the paragraph element inside the block container. Its color will also be white, and its font weight will also uh, be lighter, and its uh, width will be 500 pixels. And I have a margin top of 30 pixels, so push it down from the um, block header. So as you can see, it's looking good now. And now if you go down to the block button, it's background color, we use a hex uh, value, fee fee, C9 EF. Padding, we'll say 10 pixels vertically, 20 pixels horizontally. Margin top will be 20 pixels. Border radius to create that hill uh, box effect will be 40 pixels and the font weight will be bold so not light this time make it stand out then we'll create other animations we'll say image container in so this will be the animation that gets applied to image container to essentially uh, get this text to appear from the bottom because as you can see, it's currently already appeared, but we don't want that. We just want this um, header to be displayed, but everything else below that to not be displayed. So we'll say 0%. Height will be 13%. 100% is the end keyframe. Height will be 35%. Then we need to create the animation where it goes back in. We'll say image container out. 0% will be have the same height as the end, as the closing uh, value in the image container in and it also have opacity 1 the reason for this is because it sort of blinks in and out but it blinks out sorry not as you can see uh, it appears from the bottom but it, it disappears for a second when we uh, hover off the carousel and then 20% will set opacity zero so it disappears at the 20 percent mark 90 percent it will still have capacity zero and then it will only regain its opacity uh completely in the last keyframe where it will be back to height 13 percent to make this work we'll need to go to the image container change height from 35 percent to 13. the only reason why i had it 35 percent before so we could see what we were creating so now if we go back now we can only see our uh, our header and nothing else. None of the text below that. So to apply the animations, we're going to go to our JavaScript file. In the first carousel uh, event listener, we're going to create a new comment. So you know what we're doing. Animate text up just to make things clear. And then we're going to say first carousel find method. We use the find method because we want to target the image container within the first carousel. 
and we'll say CSS animation. We'll give it the uh, image container in animation time animation time with point two seconds, and it will be forward. So it will retain uh, the state of the animation of its last keyframe. And then in the mouse out event listener, we want to make the image go down again. So we will apply uh, the image the image out animation. So we'll say animate text out. Copy this just for brevity again, because I know it's long. Change this to image contain out. That's the only thing we change. And then we need to do the same things for the other uh, image carousels. So we copy uh, this. We go to the second carousel, paste it like that. Change uh, first carousel to second. And then we'll also copy this in the mouse out event listener, paste it here. Again, do what we did before. Change it to second. One more time now for the third carousel, third and final. And then we'll copy it here as well. And now if you go on a website, again, if we go on this and then this pops up from the bottom. You go on the right, it pops up from the bottom. You go back on the middle, it pops up from the bottom. You go down, it pops back down. And also it blinks uh, in and out as well and the disappearing animation. And so yeah, this is how you create it. This is the finished uh, image carousel. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any uh, queries or you want me to uh, explain things in more clearer detail, then don't hesitate. Post them down in the comments box below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you have any uh, recommendations for improvement on my behalf, then, then please also post them in the comments box below. And if you benefited from this tutorial, then you would do me a huge favour if you liked and subscribed. It would show your appreciation for my tutorial. And I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed the video and peace out.